Power Line TV. Power to transform lives. family life with Mama Rita. This week, I'll be with you at the Cedar Mountains, where I am doing a full family life. This episode is going to be special. This one will be from the hall and from the church of Assemblies of God, Cedar Mountains. Bring in your questions and we will reply. Let the questions flow. Let the remarks and the suggestions flow. And if you love it, let me know. And anytime I go out for family life, I will bring it on and you'll be with me. Thank you and God bless you. Father, use me as a vessel of honor. Place your word in my mouth. Your word that brings life. Your word that brings healing. Your word that brings deliverance. Your word that mends marriages and relationships. Use me tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. See the house, I didn't hear you. My message this evening is, and their eyes were opened. And their eyes were opened. Tell somebody sitting by you, and their eyes were opened. If you are watching me across the world, I want you to know that tonight, I am at the Cedar Mountain Assemblies of God Church. You will be blessed. The man in charge and the angel in charge of this place is Reverend Stephen Wakeham, who is organizing family life this week. My darling, the auditorium alone brings anointing. So from the auditorium tonight, I bring you anointing and power and healing into your homes. I want to hear a shout. Genesis chapter 3 verse 7. Genesis chapter 3 verse 7. Then the eyes of both, I'm reading NIV. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig trees together and made coverings for themselves. Then their eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig trees together and made coverings for themselves. When God created Eve, God put Adam to sleep. After the surgery, he wakes up and he declares, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. The Bible says that 
They were both naked and were not ashamed. They were both naked and were not ashamed. I want you to know that in every relationship, in every marriage, there comes a time, and that time is always the beginning, where the man will say, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. There's a time where both of them will be naked and will not be ashamed. And that is the initial stages of the relationship and the marriage. But I want you to know that the stage in which their eyes are closed or their eyes are opened but they are not ashamed is not permanent. Tell somebody it's not permanent. At the naked and ashamed stage, you can wake up early in the morning, not brush your teeth, and you can have sex and enjoy it. Am I darling some numbers? In that stage, you can decide not to have your bath. With both private parts, I'm a nurse tonight. You know nurses say it as it is. With both private parts smelling, and yet enjoy the marriage, enjoy the sex, and have orgasm. Am I in Cedar Mountain? But I want you to know that that stage is not forever. It is not permanent. Then there's another stage called their eyes open stage. This is the stage I want you to listen where the men go for side chicks. Am I speaking in a charismatic church? Some time ago, these things are not said in charismatic churches. But these days, trust me, if you don't shine your eyes, this is the stage when they find faults with each other. It is this stage that sends the two into the courtroom. The mistake that most couples make is that they don't seem to realize that the opening of their eyes is part of the process of the marriage and is part of the process of life. Say it is part of the process. You hear men at this stage, the eyes open stage, saying that my wife didn't used to be like this. I think somebody is influencing her negatively. You hear the women also complaining that my husband has changed. She no longer loves me. I don't appeal to him any longer. He's no longer proud of me. I believe he's seen somebody else. It is at this time that when couples haven't built their relationship, the symptoms of divorce sets in. And the slightest issue sends them into the courtroom. When I was young, I, 
I never could understand why people could be married for 25 years, 30 years, and divorce. My darling, if you don't watch it, there could be a possibility. When your eyes open, you see what you had seen earlier and never was bothered or never bothered you. When your eyes open, the discovery of your nakedness now brings shame. When your eyes open, the consciousness of nakedness suggests the need for covering. When their eyes opened, they knew that they were naked and they sowed thick trees together and covered themselves. Now I want to ask you a few questions. Is your wife or your husband, is your spouse having problems with your breath? My darling, all you have to do is to sow fig leaves by brushing your teeth twice a day with a very good toothpaste daily twice a day daily use mouthwash and then use mint and when I talk about mint I'm not talking about the mint toffee we've discovered that the mint toffee also add calories to us so use mint leaves the fresh ones and it keeps you fresh all through the day my darling some of the breath can kill demons Another question. Is your spouse having problems with your weight and your appearance? Cover with thick trees, thick leaves, by dieting and exercising. Get a good dressmaker to sew made-to-fit dresses for you. Is somebody listening? Before I came here this morning, my daughter, Pastor, Na Pastor Naka, we call her Pastor Naka, Nanako Siakranjiankra, we woke up and we gymed this morning. Is my dress looking good on me? My darling, when we talk about you looking good, don't think about money. It's not money. I can wear bend down boutique. How many people do not know bend down boutique? For our international audience, Bang Down Boutique is a dress that has lasted six generations. My darling, I can get it. Hold it in this way. Hold it in this way. With my...
I wear it and you think that I bought it in Harrods or Macy's. My darling, it's Katamanton. Is your spouse having a problem with the way you speak English? Are you missing your tenses? And are you missing your L and your R? Me L, ne me R. Yeah, me prop, me, me prop, eh. Me prop, brem. My darling, what do you do? Please cover with thick leaves by getting an English teacher or allowing your children to teach you. My children are correcting me and teaching me all the time. That is why I pay their school fees. When there's a word I think that I'm not pronouncing well, I show it to them. And they say, this is, and I will rehearse. My darling, you are going to lead prayer time. Go in front of your mirror and say, clap, clap, clap. You are holding microphone. We want anointing. Clap for Jesus. Clap. Holy Spirit, bless you, brother. Bless you, sister. And the way they say it confidently. My darling, that is why your wife is not following you places. And that is why your, your husband is not taking you out. Am I darling some numbers here? As a pastor, is your wife having problems with the way you teach and with the way you preach? My darling, cover by studying to show yourself approved. When you hear some preaching, you wonder, is this the conclusion or the main body or the introduction? And when I, what I can't stand is when they are preaching these kind of messages, and they are shouting and they are enjoying the message and they are sweating and they are drinking water and unfortunately I believe those people are not in this church the Loloi people Telling them after service, oh, you blessed me. You didn't bless me, oh. you blessed me. And yet they know that the pastor didn't do well. My darling, if you're a woman here and you're a preacher, let your husband be your, your, um, invigilator or examiner to be marking you. If you're a husband and you preach, let your wife. But unfortunately, if your wife too doesn't know like you,
Maybe your children can teach you. Is your spouse having problems with the way you eat? Does your mouth make too much noise when you are eating? We used to have a driver when he's eating. Oh my God. And my, ch my children were young then. They would always talk about it. And you would say, if I don't eat like that, I don't enjoy the food. Are you with me? My darling. So thick leaves and cover the way you eat. Also, unfortunately, we get people who grow up with it. They didn't get a mother, they didn't get a father, they didn't get an auntie, a grandmother to correct them. Today, they are bishops. They are apostles. They are CEOs. And when you go out with them on the table, they are drinking tea. <sighs> men in society my darling charity begins at home these are the examples of things when you overlook will make your spouse ashamed and these little things Take the romance and intimacy out of the marriage. Now I want to use myself and the Apostle General as a case study. My darling, when my husband met me, I didn't know John 3.16. No quotes, I didn't know. I realized that his whole life was centered around church and ministry. By the time his eyes were opened, I had watched the way he preaches. I had listened to the way he preaches. And today, I stand on the same platforms he stands to preach. To preach. Are you clapping or doing something like clapping? At the time he met me, I had a diploma from the polytechnic. Now they have, let me not go there. Now they have made it so beautiful. Accra Technical University. In our days, it was Accra Poly. But this is what I decided to do. In my 40s, I went back to school. Attained a first degree and attained a second degree so that at least when I'm communicating with him, I will communicate with him intelligently. <laughs> I won't be talking about Kukumaja or Chewa part one, part two. 
when he wants to discuss national issues. You move into a lot of homes and there's no communication. There's no communication because they are not on the same level. They are not on the same page. The man is discussing CNN and the woman is discussing a jacko. This is mismatch. There's no way your husband would enjoy communication with you. Is somebody listening? After going to the labor ward four times, I have four children. I gained a lot of weight. Before the eyes of my husband was opened, I have moved from U.S. size 20 to U.S. size 12 or U.K. size 14. Go ahead if you want to clap. I tried playing golf with him and I went for just three months. The three months, the whole world knew I was playing golf. You should see my golf shoes. You should see my shorts and my Lacoste top. I would tuck it in and put a belt over it. My darling, when you are out of proportion, you can't tuck in. And I will wait. When I see that he's looking at me, meanwhile, the golf, I don't know how to play. When I see that he's looking at me, I take the golf stick, push my buttocks like this, and By the time his eyes were opened, I had become a woman who likes to dress to kill. Such that he sees me as the best among women. Like Mary, I became blessed among women. Listen, my darling. As you keep form and shape, you make it easy for your, your spouse to continue to fall in love with you. And when I talk about keeping shape, I'm not only talking about the women. Some men are nine months pregnant. I have met men who can lace their own shoes. Men who cannot scrub their feet. Is somebody listening? Appearance is very important in marriage. Now my husband when I met my husband, he was so poor. He couldn't even take care of himself. By the time my eyes were opened, he had worked to put food on the table, take care of my children, and take care of many other children. I 
At the time I met my husband, he was already preaching. I became born again through him. But by the time my eyes were opened, he had increased in anointing and in his deliveries. I desired to see him a successful man of God. By the time my eyes were opened, he was sharing pulpits with very great men of God in this nation and across the nations. In conclusion, as your spouse covers his or her nakedness with fig leaves, that is, he agrees himself or herself. You must also upgrade your respect and your honor for him or her. Do not take your spouse's advancement for granted. I hope somebody is listening. Your husband is now a pastor. Or your husband is now a CEO. And I want you to listen carefully. A lot of people are divorcing because of this simple thing I'm telling you. People are reverencing him everywhere he goes to. Reverencing him in church. Reverencing him in his office. Showing him a lot of respect and honor. My darling, when he comes home, don't disrespect him. Otherwise, you will let him go to where he is respected. If his church, he would always stay at church and come home when you are sleeping. Mama, a lot of pastor's wives are making that mistake. I always tell myself, my husband is not the brother Ankara I knew. The brother Ankara who married me on the 6th of September 1986. Now he's Apostle General. Levels have changed. People are chairmaning him. Others are papering him. Others are fathering him. Others are saying him. I came with Pastor Rodney. Holding his Bible. An iPad. Others are serving him water. If I always look at him with the eye of when I knew him 35 years ago and he didn't have a bicycle tie, I'll be making myself a dishonor. When I'm addressing him in public, I make sure I dress him the way people do. When I travel with him, now everywhere we go, there are people to serve him. But when he was up and coming, and we did have armor bearers following us everywhere, and we travel, I make sure I don't want trouble. I do the job of Pastor Rodney by holding the Bible, serving him water, bringing the Bible to the pulpits. Are you clapping or doing something like clapping?
Is somebody listening to me? Is a woman listening to me here? And is a wife listening to me? A lot of men have been attracted to their secretaries, to their PAs. It's not like they fell in love with the PAs, but they fell in love with the respect. They fell in love with the honor. They fell in love with the tea and coffee they are preparing. They fell in love with the way he was greeted. Because he comes home and you're always looking at him as the man you married who was wearing big trousers and crimping shirts. Men, are you here? Remember that they sowed fig trees together. They both covered each other. So in other words, respect each other. My darling, when my husband met me, I had, I had DBS, Diploma in Business Studies, from Accra Polytechnic. My darling, I've moved on. Now I have a first degree in entrepreneurship. I won the best student award. I have a second degree in leadership and governance. I have a daughter who is a lawyer. I have a son who is a pastor. Is somebody listening to me? So as I accord him respect, he also needs to accord me respect. Your wife is not the same woman. You married who didn't know our birthday. At least she's giving you children. If she has upgraded herself, you too, you need to respect her. You don't insult her before the children. Call her names before the children. Root to her before the children. Give respect and get respect back. Respect your spouse for who he is and for who she is. At least she was created and he was created in the image of God. He reflects the glory of God. And for the women here, I want you to know, a man's number one need is respect. If you joke with the respect of any man, my darling, even those who haven't achieved are looking for respect let alone those who have achieved. Never disrespect each other in public. Number two, as you upgrade yourself and you cover each other with fake leaves, you must keep the romance and the friendship in the relationship. Never stop dating each other. Sometimes I don't see my husband as my husband. Sometimes I see him as my boyfriend. Is somebody listening to me? Go on dates. And when we say go on dates, we are not saying get get a visa and buy a plane ticket these days there are places in ghana 
When you Google it, you will find it. Nobody is sponsoring Cedar Church, so I will mention their names. Is somebody listening to me? Go on holidays together. My darling, life is short. Enjoy it. Are you clapping or doing something like clapping? Nobody will die here. But don't wait until one person goes to be with the Lord. Then you say, if I had known, I should have enjoyed life better. And I should have enjoyed my wife or enjoyed my husband. Is somebody listening to me? Don't stop the things you used to do when you got married. Like bathing together. Like eating together. Like watching the same television show. Like watching the same news. Don't stop. Continue to send love messages to each other. Serve each other breakfast in bed. It's a long time somebody served you breakfast in bed. The husband's here. I will come back on Sunday and find out first thing Saturday morning how many husbands served their wives in bed. My darling, it works like a magic. When you say she should get up, she will get up. When you say she should lie, she will lie. When you ask her to salute you, she will salute you. Don't stop telling each other I love you. My darling, say it as many times as you can. Confession brings possession. Is there anybody sitting by the wife or the husband? Please tell each other I love you. I love her. I love this lady. Oh, wow. She went straight to the back, gave the husband a kiss. I'm sure the husband hasn't given her a kiss in a long time. My darling, keep the friendship. Sometimes when you get old, the romance faced a bit. What keeps the relationship is the friendship. Communicate, chat, talk, laugh, appreciate humor. Your husband can't chat with you because after two minutes of chatting, it turns into a quarrel. Ah. Who born you? I have an SOS message. And this gentleman sent me the message. No, he wanted to talk to me on, on, Sat on Monday. That is yesterday. And I said, my voice is gone. So if you talk, I won't be able to talk back. So he said, then he will send a message. As I send the message, the message is so long, I haven't been able to read it. I told him that when I finish Cedar Mountain tomorrow, I will read it. But the first line I saw, they are in courtship, not marriage. She said, Mama Rita, I listen to your red flags. The red flags are too many. 
So I'm advising myself. Keep the friendship. Chat. Enjoy each other now. It will take friendship to move you from your current level to the next level. My darling, at 65 years, at 70 years, how much sex can you have? At 70, the children have all left. Now to be the two of you. If you haven't built your friendship, you will realize that in the marriage, in the same home, in the same bedroom, the two of you are strangers. Don't wait when you are 80, when the children have left you, that you say, had I known, I would have built my romance and built my friendship. God bless you. and wife I want to see you together please come forward <laughs> lift up your bread Reverend Wyndham please Come and pray over the elements for us. And then I'll do. Thank you, mommy. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we hold in our hands your broken body. Your word says that the two shall become one flesh. As we partake of this holy communion, let your breath come upon it. Let the two become one flesh indeed. In the name of Jesus. Just as we eat the bread and drink the cup. Just as the bread and the wine is eaten and is mixed up in our minds, our mouth. And cannot be separated. So let every marriage be inseparable inseparable and let the teachings of today indeed bring life new breath into our relationships receive power to love let the romance in your marriage be activated in the mighty name of Jesus Amen Amen married couples face each other Say what you are holding. Say to each other, what you are holding is not an ordinary bread or an ordinary wafer. This is the body of Jesus. My darling, if you can't look into the face and the eyes of your spouse, Look into the eyes. Mean what you are saying. Say, this is not an ordinary wafer. As we eat, as we eat, as we eat, may Jesus be in our marriage. May Jesus be in our home. 
May we be one in spirit, in soul, and in body. This marriage is forever. Serve each other. Some people have never served their spouses before. The Uncle Nam people. A year by this time. A year by this time. I declare that a year by this time you will be standing in front with your spouse. A year by this time somebody will be serving you. Are you holding your bread? Or you have eaten it? Lift up your bread. Look at me. After the death of Jesus, Jesus meets two men walking on the road. Two men who know Jesus or knew Jesus very well. But as they walked and they talked and they told Jesus, haven't you heard? Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem that our Jesus was killed? He was crucified. As they said those things, little did they know that they were actually talking to Jesus. The Bible says that when they came to the end of the road, it was getting late. Jesus was walking on and the two men said, Jesus, it's getting late. We invite you into this inn to come and dine and have some rest. As they were dining, the Bible says that Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to them. And immediately, their eyes were opened. My darling, as you eat this bread, may your eyes be opened. May you never make a mistake in the choice of a future partner. May you not go for a drunkard when you didn't know. May you never go for a drug addict that you didn't know. May you never go for a man who is impotent. My darling, I'm telling you about things that are happening in the Christendom. May you never go for a 419 guy. May you never go for somebody who steals offering. May you never go for anybody who doesn't pay tithes. So you yourself be marking yourself. May you never go for somebody who every morning during courtship will ask you, have you had your quiet time? 
give you scriptures and immediately after the marriage tells you I don't want you to go to that church again my darling I'm telling you things I handle say by this bread as I eat may my eyes be opened open my spiritual eye that I will see 10 years from now that I'll see 20 years from now that I'll see 30 years from now when the right man comes when the right woman comes let me see it the person could be poor today the person might not be an academician today but tomorrow that person will be the one to take me to the next level amen eat uncle nam don't serve anybody serve yourself but i prophesy to you that it shall not be long i hear the wedding bells ringing you too you will wear some of my rings your wife will not wake up in the middle of the night and pull and pull a knife on you you won't always dream that your wife has turned into a snake my darling i'm not telling you quick one nancy stories Lift up your blood all together. Say with this blood, may every sickness, known or unknown, flush out of my system. With this blood, I pray for perfect health. With this blood, I pray for long life. As I drink, I am drinking the richness of God. I'm drinking the prosperity of Jesus. As I drink, may I know him and know the power of his resurrection. As I drink, may it be well with my spirit, may it be well with my soul, and may it be well with my body. Singles, wait. Couples, one at a time. Say, with the blood of Jesus, I renew my covenant with you. If I haven't told you in a long while that I love you, I want you to know that I haven't changed my mind. I love you. Hey, the singles, you envy us. It will get to your turn, oh. Tell the married ones, it will get to my turn. Say, I want you to know that I am not divorcing you today. Neither would I divorce you tomorrow. This marriage is forever. Tonight has reminded me when we stood before the altar and exchanged our vows. Tonight, I exchange my vow with you. Tell each other something one after. You are the I, I, 
I didn't hear. I didn't hear. I didn't hear. Some people can't say anything. Listen. Say to your partner. Say to your partner, thank you for marrying me. My life has never been the same. Today, hey, some people are not saying it all. Are you here? Couples, are you here? Or you've gone home? Say thank you for marrying me. My life has never been the same. My eyes are opened. But every nakedness, I will get a fig leaf and cover you up. Together, we will make it. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Ghost. Thank you for watching me, and I hope you enjoyed. If there's anything more you want to see or you want to hear, please don't hesitate to send me your, your suggestions, your questions, and anything. Coming all the way from Cedar Mountain, Assemblies of God, thank you.